Hello and welcome to EC Electronics. Today's video is part 21 of ISRO Technical Assistant Mock Test Series. I really hope that you will find uh, the questions useful and also you will be able to answer all the questions within the given time period. Uh, anyway, if you like the, the, like the videos, like the questions, please do like, share and subscribe. Okay, okay let's see the 10 questions now. So let's see the solutions of all the 10 questions which you have already seen. Okay. So the first question is inductance of an inductor is inversely proportional to its dash. You'll be seeing the questions on board. I'll be reading the questions anyway. Okay. So the inductance is directly, sorry, is inversely proportional to its dash. A number of turns, B area of cross section, C absolute permeability, D length. Correct answer is, before discussing the answer, I would like to share the equation for inductance is mu into n square a by l so it is inversely proportional to the length okay permeability number of turns and area or area of cross section the inductance is inversely proportional to that is a question it is the length okay correct answer is option d length is the correct answer for your first question moving on to the second question The second question is, which of the following is not the energy stored in the capacitor? So, out of the following equations, which is not the equation for the energy stored in the capacitor. Okay, so I will write the equation first. E is equal to Cv square by 2. And if you substitute V equal to Q by C in this, Q by C in this equation, you will get E is equal to Cv square by 2. Also, E is equal to Qv by 2. And that is again equal to Q square by 2C. Just substitute in terms of Q and then V. You will get all these three equations. Okay. So the equation is E is equal to C V square by 2. It can also be written as Q square by 2C. If you substitute, if you substitute V is equal to Q by C. Just substitute V equal to Q by C in this equation you will get this form okay and also here where yeah here you can write c v square you can write c into v into v okay and you can put c into v as q and again one more v will be remaining so q into v by 2 anyway you will get all the three equations if you keep on putting v equal to q by c and q is equal to cv okay i'm just giving all the equations now from the options you have to pick which is not the equation for energy and that is the last one q i'll write it here okay so the last one which is q c by 2 this is not the equation for energy stored okay correct answer is option d anyway just try this try to get this equation okay so the correct answer for second question is d q c by 2 is not the equation for energy i hope it is clear moving on to the third question Third question is from 8051, which is again a very, very important subject in terms of technical assistant examination. Which of the two architectures save memory? The question is between von Neumann architecture and Harvard architecture. Which are the two architectures used for memory allocation? We have discussed about the memory architecture of 8051 in which the beginning we have discussed about these two architectures. Okay, If you, if you want to have a clarity, go watch that videos. You will be very clear i'm sure okay so the question is 
Which of the two architectures save memory? A. Harvard, B. Von Neumann, C. Harvard and Von Neumann, D. None of the mentioned. The correct answer is Von Neumann. Why I'll tell you? Because in Von Neumann architecture, all the memories, that is instruction memory and data memory are combined together and, and getting stored into a single memory storage area. So in that, memory saving is done. Whereas in Harvard architecture, instruction and data are getting stored to two different memories. Okay. So there we need more memory. So the correct answer is B. Von Neumann architecture. Okay. Moving on to the fourth question. The fourth question is very, very simple question. What is the file extension that is loaded in the microcontroller for executing any instruction? So if you have done microcontroller programming at least once in your once in your life or in any of the labs, there is a microcontroller lab, you will be knowing that the file extension is dot hex because we are doing dot hex programming or hex hexadecimal programming in assembly right so the correct answer will be option d dot hex the other options are dot doc dot c dot text no when we are doing programming for microcontroller 8051 we are doing assembly language programming and the file type is dot hex okay that is the fourth question and moving on to the fifth question you can see the question on board which of the following logical expressions represent the logical diagram short? Okay, very, very simple question. So, I'll draw the, the diagram for you. There is a NOT gate, there is a A, and there is a B, there is again a NOT gate. From these two NOT gates, it is going to one AND gate. I'll draw a very rough diagram. And then A and B is again going to another AND gate. I hope I have uh, said this as AND gate, not NAND, it is AND, okay. Again, these two are going to a OR gate, okay. This much is a circuit. Now, here A bar is coming, B bar is coming. So, this will be A bar, B bar, right. And this will be AB. And if you are summing these two, then you will be getting A bar, B bar plus AB, right. So, this will be your expression. So, from the given expressions, the correct answer coming is option D, A bar, B bar plus AB. Very simple question. If you have at least done one, this logic circuit simplification in your life, you will be able to answer this. Okay. Correct answer is option D. Now, sixth question. Again from digital electronics. The device shown here is most likely a dash. So the name of the device is not given. Just a diagram is given to you. You have to identify what is that device. So if you observe the device, you can see that there are output lines and the number of output lines is 4 and there is only one input line. Okay. And also there is an enable and there is two select lines. So since there are select lines, there are 90% chances that it could be either MUX or DMUX because we have only heard of either MUX or DMUX having a select line. Encoders or decoders or any other things or inverter. The options are comparator, inverter, multiplexer, demultiplexer. So the other options won't have select lines. We have not heard of that. Okay. So it can be either MUX or DMUX. Now looking more deeper into the diagram, you can see that the number of outputs is more than the number of inputs. So it has to be a D multiplexer because the, the, the function of a multiplexer is to multiplex or add the inputs to fewer outputs and multiplexer will be doing the reverse. So the output number will be more in multiplexer. Okay. So correct answer is option D, D multiplexer. Okay. D max. Now moving on to the seventh question. Seventh question is from adders. 3-bit full adder contains dash. A, 3 combinational inputs. B, 4 combinational inputs. C, 6 combinational inputs. D, 8 combinational inputs. That is how many combinations of inputs a 3-bit adder can have. How many combinations uh, the 3-bit adder can have? Just have a thing. I have a thought, okay? It will be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1. 
वन जीरो जीरो वन जीरो वन 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 जीरो एंड वन 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 ओके सो दिस विल बी द कॉम्बिनेशन राइट हाउ मेनी आर दे देर आर एट कॉम्बिनेशन विच इज टू रेज टू थ्री इज द कॉम्बिनेशन कंसिडर इफ इट इज एन बिट एडर टू रेज टू एन कॉम्बिनेशन इट कैन हैव दैट इज अ जनरल लॉजिक ओके करेक्ट आंसर इज ऑप्शन डी एट नाउ मूविंग ऑन टू द एट क्वेश्चन Eighth question is from Opam. Determine the output from following circuit. So you can see that the given circuit is a Opam. There is a inverting terminal, non-inverting terminal. Input is connected to inverting terminal. And what is the nature of output is a question. A, one eighty degree in phase with input. B, one eighty degree out of phase with input. C, same as input. D, output cannot be determined. So while studying the basics of op amps we have discussed that for the case of a inverting op amp this is a inverting op amp why because the input is connected to inverting terminal right so since this is a inverting op amp the output will be 180 degree out of phase with the input that is the property for a inverting op amp and the correct answer is option b okay so the correct answer for your eighth question is b now moving on to the ninth question Which of the following electrical characteristics is not exhibited by an ideal op amp? That is, out of the given options, which is not the not the property of a ideal op amp. That is a question. A infinite voltage gain. Yes, that is the property of a ideal op amp, which is so. That is not your correct answer. B infinite bandwidth. Again, that is a property. C infinite output resistance. No, that is the correct answer. and the last option is infinite slew rate okay so for the uh, op amp that is an ideal op amp the output resistance is zero okay so in order to have maximum loads or maximum loading output resistance is zero it is not infinity but the input resistance of an ideal op amp is infinity please note input resistance for an ideal op amp is said to be infinity and output resistance is Zero. Okay. So correct answer is option C. C is not a right option or a right characteristics. Okay. So correct answer for ninth question is option C. Moving on to the last question is from network. So the question is find the voltage V X. I'll draw the circuit for you. Very very simple question. It is just the application of K V L. so the resistance again here one um, one more resistance here also now this is 15 volt okay directly the voltage of voltage across the resistors is given this is 15 this is 10 this is vx which we need to find and the voltage source value is 50 this is 15 volt what is vx is a question okay how to find vx we just have to apply the kvl or mesh analysis okay here we are going to start from this direction the current will be always flowing from the positive terminal of the battery okay so if you have not watched the kvl video please go watch it it will be very useful for you okay you will get to know the basics if you don't know if you know it, then it's absolutely fine okay so the current will start flowing from the positive terminal of the battery and since the current is flowing in this direction positive negative positive negative positive negative positive and negative here it is already given negative and then positive terminal of the battery so the equation will be 50 is equal to 15 plus 10 plus i hope you cannot see okay i'll write it below 50 equal to 15 plus 10 plus 15 again plus vx If you solve for Vx, you will be getting Vx is equal to 10 volt. Correct answer is option A. 10 is your correct answer. I've just applied KVL, and I'll be very soon doing a video on tricks to do KVL or mesh analysis faster. Okay, by applying some sign uh, conventions and everything. Okay, so anyway, the question answer is 10th question answer is option A. 
So I really hope that you found this video useful. You found all the questions useful. If you are preparing for technical assistant examination, if any of your friends is preparing for technical assistant examination, please do share with it uh, with them. And also, if you found the video useful, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you want more videos, please do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching and keep on watching.